Despite this being a slower week when it comes to League of Legends news, with the new TFT being on PBE, couple of new skins for League on PBE as well, and the new Legends of Runeterra expansion coming in two weeks, we still got an interesting post to talk about. The voting results for the visual updates. By now, many of you may know that Skarner did indeed win. Personally, I am surprised. I thought it would be a battle of Shivana and Trindamir, but I was wrong. And now I was proven that people did vote with their hearts. Because Skarner has a bit of an identity crisis, so he really needed it. But I didn't believe it would happen. So here we are. Skarner will start getting worked on, but we may be getting more. Let's first read what Rad Reeve has to say about this, before we get into my personal opinions and hopeful wishes. At the beginning of the post we get the data. And of course, as they mentioned, it was a decisive victory for Skarner. What surprised me about this data is that it is global. Which means that people all over the world wanted to see Skarner reworked. Even in the East. Which is where I definitely thought Shivana would win. But nope, apparently it is Skarner all the way. Then we get the details. Loads of you gave the Rift's one and only Scorpion some love this time around. Skarner stood head and shoulders above the other contenders, claiming the top spot in the global polls by a wide margin. We're excited that Skarner won the VGU vote, as we think he has tons of potential to be something truly special on the league roster. We've tried some smaller reworks of Skarner's kit in the past, but it never really increased his play rate. So we'll be looking to do a massive reboot of his kit, theme and visuals, similar to Sion and Urgot. We'll look to keep his kidnapping ult in some form, but otherwise we'll be rebuilding him from ground up. Here I quickly wanna mention, remember that they want to keep his ultimate, but everything else might be getting scrapped. When we get to talk about his abilities, this might be interesting. He then talks about Skarner's background, and his race. The Brecken don't have tons of lore currently, and we're looking forward to diving deeper into their world and backstory. It will still be a couple of months until we get started, but once we do, we'll share our progress in dev blocks, so we can get your feedback on our Scorpion friend. So keep an eye out for one of those later this year. By this he pretty much confirmed that Skarner is coming in 2023 at the earliest. So whatever's happening in 2022, we have no idea. But then he mentioned something really interesting. Before I go, I wanted to talk about our forever a bridesmaid Shivana. We know a lot of you are disappointed that our favorite half-dragon lady keeps getting so close to winning without ever taking the crown. Like many of you, we really want to see her updated because a badass half-dragon shifter has so much potential. As you know, we don't do votes for every VGU, like with Mundo. So while we can't promise that Shivana will be the next big VGU we do, she is a pretty strong contender for the next one we explore outside of a VGU vote. Be sure to keep an eye out for updates on Skarner's VGU this year, and we'll be sure to share any plans for updating other champions as they come up. So yeah, Shivana is highly likely going to be the next VGU after him, but it's not guaranteed. I find the reasoning quite interesting. He mentioned that Shivana was always there for the past few votes, and she always did really well on the polls. Now, if we ignore the fact that he was in the last place this time around, Nocturne has always been there too. But it's interesting to see that he is not mentioned. I see what you're doing, Riot. I see who you want to serve us on a golden plate. Anyway, that's it for the VGU portion. Then we also get a quick part about the skins. And here it is revealed that the winner is indeed Gothic. By almost a double of Arclight and Infernal. And once again, this is global. At the back of my head it was obvious that Arclight was not going to win, because that skin line is simply not popular, so people wouldn't have the urge to vote for it. Infernal is popular to a certain degree, but as I mentioned it's just champions on fire. What would they do with it if they reworked it? Turned it into demons? That's how it originated. But we've had quite too many of those, especially those on fire. So yes, it was kinda obvious that Gothic would win, and I'm happy with it. And here's what they say about it. Please leave all the overcoats, canes and top hats with the doorman, because we're about to get Gothic. We're excited to see this level of excitement, and can't wait to deliver this angsty thematic. We haven't visited the Gothic thematic in a minute, 
and much like emo, we are glad it's not dead. We are really excited at how our middle school aesthetic might look in current league, and there are a bunch of different directions we could take it. We have started exploring some of them already, as we are well into the discovery process, from cute and spooky to serious and dark. There are so many shades of black for us to try. Our next steps are identifying what feels really good about the existing gothic skins, and which direction we would like to move in for the new skins. We'll check back in on things later, but for now we are looking forward to approaching this thematic with a sense of poise and rationality. And then they thank us for the votes. Once again, we have had a lot of demons in the past few skin thematics. So when it comes to gothic, I would suggest to not go the serious dark path, and instead stay with the cute and the spooky. That's a thematic we haven't really seen in a while. Originally, that's what Halloween skins were. They were kinda parody of themselves. Now it's more like a parody of that parody. Just look at Emo Amumu. That speaks for itself. Go the comic route with these. Anyway, that was the skin part, now back to Skarner. The reason why seeing Skarner here is interesting is because Skarner is open wide. With this rework they are not really reworking Skarner. He doesn't really have a clear identity. So it's more like Riot is just making a new champion. Just like what happened to Sion, as they mentioned in the post. If you look at his old version, literally the only part that stayed similar is that he has an axe and he has a shield. Everything else is just a brand new champion. That's what we are looking at here. When it comes to his story, the only part that they need to keep is the one where the Brekkern are connected to Hextech. In this sense, other champions are relying on the lore of the Brekkern. Camille's story would not make sense if the Hextech gems didn't come from the Brekkern. So when it comes to the lore, this has to stay the same. Otherwise, it would be unnecessary retconning. I mean, in the past, when it comes to Skarner, Riot could have retconned him already. Originally, he comes from the Crystal Scar, which many of you may remember as Dominion, which was a game mode that took place in a city called Kalamanda. Now, Kalamanda was on the original old map, but even after all of that was scrapped, that place was transferred onto the new map. So right now, Dominion, or the Crystal Scar, technically still exists at the coast of Shurima. So if Riot went this far to keep that part of him intact, they better keep Hextech part of his lore too. However, everything else can be retconned. It doesn't affect the world in any way. The fact that some of the Brekkerns started waking up after the Rune Wars, that doesn't really matter. What matters is that in the modern age, People discovered the Brekkern buried deep beneath Shurima and they started cutting off their tails because they had magical powers. You know, those are the Hextech gems. And because Skarner is one of the last Brekkern to stay alive, I really hope Riot makes him extremely depressed that humanity wiped out his kind. Right now, in game, his voice lines don't really reflect that. So I hope he is enraged at Piltover, and that he truly goes berserk at the human stupidity. Now, visually, this is where things get really interesting. You see, Riot hates cliché designs. Most of the cliché designs come from old champions. But even there, they still all have a twist. We got a bearded wizard, but he's a superhero. We got a classic sword and shield knight, but they are a godly battle mage. A classic archer, but they have icy spells. A pyromancer, but he's a bit too pyro. A royal knight, but he gets a pass because he's a really old design. You see, these twists is what make those champions iconic. So I understand why Riot never gave us a bearded wizard in a robe. It's because it would be just like all the other bearded wizards. Skarner's twist was that he was a scorpion, but made of crystals. Which is not the most iconic thing which you can come up with. So if they want to turn Skarner into a memorable character, they have to go wild with him. And because a simple scorpion is not an interesting design, and because Riot is going to change who Skarner is and what his race does, they can go anywhere with him. They can give him two tails, they can give him extra pincers, they can give him a brand new body. 
Have you been to the League of Memes subreddit recently? I hope that won't happen. And it is because the design was left so open that it feels like Riot is making a brand new champion. This is no longer a rework. And that's why the feedback will be really important. Just like people spoke out about Mundo Hand, even though Riot laughed it off, the concepts will be the important part. When it comes to the community feedback, this is going to carry Skarner. And I really want Riot to go wild with him. Sure, keep him as an insect of some earthy style, but at the end of the day, he doesn't have to be a scorpion. But yes, pincers and a tail would be nice to keep. I know you usually try to respect the original player group, and you try to not change a champion too much for their VGU, but this time around, a bigger change might be for good. Lastly, we have to mention the abilities. They said that his ultimate, in some form, is staying. But I would argue that his Q should also stay. His slash is quite iconic, even though pincers are for pinching, not slashing. I only know about this guy trying to use scratch at early levels. But under normal circumstances, pinching would be more interesting to see than scratching. When it comes to his shield, I understand the idea behind it, but right now his shield doesn't feel like a shield. Even visually it's not that interesting. And in my opinion, it would be cooler to give him regeneration instead. Because you can tie this to his lore. Because his race was wiped out, what if he was trying to find the crystals and regenerate them back into the Brekkern? Because if there is no way to bring the Brekkern back, in the story, Skarner just may not have a reason to live at all. This could be a cool way to tie it together. And of course, then there is his projectile, which really doesn't make sense. So, what if we tied all of these abilities to magic instead? We know that the gems he carries around are the Hextech gems. They are a source of magic. So what if Skarner actually used magic? You see, this can be tied to his passive. I don't know if many of you remember, but originally Skarner didn't have the weird crystals spawning around the map. Those were put in during a patch simply called the Juggernaut update. I truly believe this new passive is pointless, and so instead, once again, his passive could be tied to his story. Remember, he is trying to find his lost kin. He is looking for the crystals. So just turn that into his passive. Similar to Kindred, make it so that every few minutes he can find a Hextech gem in the jungle. And the more he carries, because they are tied to magic, the more magical his abilities get. So his abilities would start in a lesser state, his pinch would be a normal pinch, but after he collects 5 Hextech gems, his pinch gets magically enhanced. This is what could be Skarner's new identity. He would be the Hextech collector. He starts as a relatively normal scorpion, but the more Hextech he collects, the more magical his abilities get. It could be a cool way to introduce a new scaling jungler. Like Bard and Meeps, but it's way more depressing. Anyway, that's my take on Skarner. I only really want three things from him. Keep his lore connection to Hextech gems, make magic part of his kit, and give him an interaction with Seraphine, which he deserves. 